Sup, powerful nonsenses. Hello. It is time for another episode. Welcome back. Episode 126. Yes. I Good nearly start. went into Gary V then. 126 of the Ask Gary V Show. Sure. But I didn't. Well, I did, because I no, just did. did. Anyway, but it's not the Ask Gary V Show, because neither of us are Gary V. It's powerful nonsense. Anyway, so that segue is done. <laughs> <laughs> um, got a pretty cool episode. I think so. One that we talk about a lot. And yes. I had a, this conversation with somebody yesterday as well. Oh, so Who was it? In fact, I had this conversation twice yesterday. It must be fake. It must be in the mind, ready to come out, to spread to more ears. <laughs> yeah. Or are you saying that you're basically going to have it down now so you know how to deliver it? Mm, no, maybe not. Because I'm it? not very... I don't think I'm as articulate as I might like to think. As me. As, mm, mm, <laughs> maybe. How was the reception after you told these people what we're about to tell our listeners and viewers? Well, actually, the one person said, actually, thank you. I needed that. I needed to hear that. I was oh, like... Powerful stuff. Waning I life. am the Messiah. Changing lives <laughs> since 1987. Nine. I was going the wrong way. The wrong way. Good recovery there. Do you like that? Good recovery. But anyway, so what we are talking about today is leading with lifestyle. Yes. Had a very interesting conversation yesterday about somebody who was like, um, they might be listening, so I apologize if it is them. But they were like, I want to be an analyst. Analyst? Yeah. He was like, I'm fully aware that analysts are going to be like, the thing the written page. off. Oh, really? Before long, because it'll be all be auto- automated. Oh yeah, of course. Uh, quite quickly. Yeah, yeah. He's like, but I want money. I was like, yeah, mm. but why do you want money? He's like, well, because then if I have money, I can do the things that I want to do. I was like, yeah, but then you're going to end up chasing the money and not doing the things that you want to do. Mm-hmm. So I had that conversation. Yeah, to kind of. Flip on his head, uh-huh. question a few things. I threw out the genie question that keeps coming up over and over in every or episode. Or it's kind so of like gonna... that other question, isn't it, about the kind of businessman who sees the fisherman and he's like, oh, you know if you, the fisherman's fishing, and he's yeah. like, you know if you had, you hired a few more fishermen, you'd catch some more fish. Uh-huh. And if you, if, you, if you caught more fish, you'd sell them, then you could buy some boats. And then if you sold those boats, uh-huh. you could buy a ship. And then once you've got a ship, then you won't have to work anymore. And he's like, then you can do your fishing. And he was like... Well, that's what I'm doing now. Yeah, right. <laughs> I've not heard that one before. Yeah, yeah. That's actually a really good one. So it kind of is. That, that is such a good one. It's that same sort of concept where you're kind of, you think you need the money to go do the thing you want to do, but a lot of the time what people actually want is the time to do those hobbies. Uh-huh. And it's kind of like, are you chasing your tail uh-huh. in a way? Yeah, no. I, that's, I wish really I had good... that one for yesterday's conversation because <laughs> really that was exactly what I was trying to say to him. Yeah. Which I was kind of like, yeah, you know, you want... You know that you want this because this is gonna because you want the happiness and what's gonna make you happy is this. But you think instead of just going straight for that, you think, well, I can't do that yet because yeah. this, this, and this. So to do that now, I need this, and though to get that, I need this, and to get that, I need this. Yeah. So you end up chasing that rather than chasing the happiness. And I think a lot of the time it is usually money that people think is the key to the lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And often, actually, like we've said in other ones, I think, I think what was it. Uh, living less or earning less to live more yes. kind of along the same sort of lines it's yeah that yeah if you didn't earn as much could you actually free up the time to go play basketball on the weekends or in the morning or whatever you want to get up to really mm-hmm. should we intro ourselves for those who maybe are listening for the first time yes let's oh, do that I need to stretch yes are you are you done now yeah just a bit yeah. a bit tense and short be you've been doing a hard day's graft tell me about it hard day's graft 40, you're not used to it 14 hours straight right that's working, working on a on a labour intensive. Yes, start business. up my own start little startup, up. but we'll talk about that in another episode. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. So I am Wayne Ingram. I am Jem Yildiz. And we are the Powerful Nonsense crew. With the crew today, not the posse. Not the posse. Have I? I think I said posse once. Oh, okay. I go with crew usually. Yeah. Makes us sound because you know. Ass. I'm nice. like. Sounds like we the can king mess. of urban. Sounds like we can mess people up if we say crew <laughs> <laughs> with our lyrical words. I am the most urban man you will ever meet. <laughs> <laughs> Debatable. Anyway. In it. In it. <laughs> All right. Shall we crack on? So with yes. This okay. Show? So this is one thing that that I have. I am quite proud to say that I have managed to do, and as have you. Yes. And I tell people a lot, I'm like, it takes a lot of freaking work to do it, but it's definitely attainable, which is like just building your lifestyle around what you want to do. 
Mm. And I think it goes back to what we were saying a minute ago, which is like, you get so caught up in, like, as an example, I know so many actors that are now no longer actors. They had every intention of being actors, but then they were like, well, I can't just be an actor because it doesn't pay the bills. And so I'm going to get a good career as and ha- as my backup yeah, in yeah, case yeah. the acting goes wrong and then the career pays the bills and then you get stuck in the career rather than doing actually what you set out to do in the first place. And then you're like, you're kind of lying to yourself saying, well, look, I'll do the career for a few years, get myself on the housing ladder uh-huh. and I'll get back to it later on and soon enough is it, they, they say mm-hmm. like the golden handcuffs are on and I think it's much harder to backtrack. So it's like if you're starting now, the earlier you can start leading with that lifestyle, right. it's a lot easier from the beginning than actually looking backwards and trying to remove things from your life because mm-hmm. you come so accustomed to certain ways of doing things. Right, exactly. And also, you know, if you're like, oh, well, I'm going to come back to it later, you're also, I think, are forgetting when you have that, that your responsibilities are only going to go up mm-hmm. as time goes on because you're going to attach yourself to more things, whether that be a relationship, a child, a house, a, a team of people that you're looking after you know your parents aren't going to get any younger they might eventually need looking after and stuff yeah, and, yeah. and things like that and you're you kind of I think sometimes we assume that everything is just going to stay as it is now mm-hmm. and that at any moment we can just go okay I just want to go back to that and yeah. it's not how it works yeah not for sure I think one of the problems as well that people have is I think so society wise and cultural wise I think we're so ingrained that we feel we need to do the work first before we can kind of mm-hmm. like reward ourselves later. Mm-hmm. And I think as well, if you're the kind of person that decides to lead with your lifestyle, then I think a lot of the time you're doing things that people are like, wait, shouldn't this be work? How come you're having this much fun? Maybe you're not earning as much initially, mm-hmm. but then people kind of might put a bit of pressure on you and be like, how come you're doing all this? But I think you're going to end up having probably more energy, more productivity into all those things you do. Because I find when I'm living, like I'm going to the gym, I'm keeping myself fit. I'm seeing friends. I've got that lifestyle balance there. I feel that when I actually do the work, I'm like super. I'm super focused on it. I feel like I get more done. So I think sometimes as well, you're going to come up against people who are going to think that you're, I don't know, prioritizing things that shouldn't be prioritized uh-huh. because it doesn't look like hard work. Right. And it's not that normal graph which I think everyone's accustomed to, like the working nine to five, five days a week. So I think as well, you have mm-hmm. to kind of expect that people will kind of be a bit shocked at your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But I think it kind of comes to that thing where you have to kind of like reassess, like why did, why did the previous generation and the generation before and all that go for steady, stable jobs? I think we, it was the prom, it was the promise of having the lifestyle that you want. Yeah. You wake up, you know, you're going to work, you know, at the end of the day, you're getting a paycheck, which means you can come home and live that lifestyle that you want. (laughs) But the issue has been that lifestyle costs are higher than we're being paid. Yeah. For a nine to five job, usually sometimes, and so so then the carrot on the end of the stick becomes well, look, if you work harder, then we'll give you more, which yeah. means that you can do more of the stuff that you want to do. But they kind of leave out the bit that actually working harder also means working more yeah so you don't have the time so you don't have as much time freed up to yeah. and so then it becomes okay well look if you go up to the next rung of the ladder then we'll actually let you we'll give you more time off we'll still pay you the same amount but we'll give you more time off yeah so it's more flexible for you and then you can do more of what you want yeah it's that kind of alan watts isn't it sort of chasing yeah keep chasing the next level but in the same front of that he also kind of jokes at the fact that people go to work so they can have that freedom that lifestyle mm-hmm. Then they go home, they're knackered, and instead they have to watch people on the TV who have that lifestyle right. that they wish they aspired to. There's a lot of psychology behind uh-huh. it as well, which I think is pretty. Deep. It's it's actually com- to completely segue, but I think <laughs> but I think it's also relevant. I actually had this thought when I was observing social media, mm-hmm. because I love social media to a degree, <laughs> but I have also got incredibly uh, disenfranchised with social media in just how narcissistic it has become no yeah like everybody just talking well, we about do, themselves we do have a nicer uh, blog why people why why people brag right but it's it's also gone beyond that it's not even so much the bragging anymore that's that's kind of starting to bug me there was a certain individual that has recently got married 
So that's nice and vague because everybody's getting married at the moment, apparently. <laughs> um, and their honestly, their Instagram feed and their Facebook feed read like watching an episode of TOWIE, which I've never done, by the way, but it's what I imagine an episode of TOWIE <laughs> to be like, right? I have watched an episode of TOWIE, so I can just, I can okay. confirm whether it is the case. Right. Really, like, <laughs> OTT blingy wedding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With OTT wedding dresses and things like that, and I was just like... That's like the done thing, though, now. No one does, like, a wedding. It has to be right. the it, next level. It has to compete with... And it's kind of like everybody is kind of in the view that they now have their own reality TV show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the Truman Show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's scary. It's your world and how are you going to make it look and how are you going to come across to everybody and what, right. it's the it's everybody trying to show the rest of the world their lifestyle and kind of trying to show it in a way of like I can do what the celebs do can I, I can do what they do on Tawi and can I can I, do can I pop a good hashtag is it, is it the uh, Kardashianism or the Oh <laughs> of society Kardashian like, K- Kardashianism Kardashian. try saying that when you're drunk Kardashianism <laughs> <laughs> the can, no, the Kardashianization of people. Kardashianization, all, that's easier that's to say. That's better, isn't yeah. it? It's kind of that idea that people now want to... Because you can kind of show your lifestyle mm-hmm. to everybody and how you live. It's kind of like people mm-hmm. feel the need to do that. Mm-hmm. The next thing is everybody releasing sex tapes. That's going to be well, the next thing. You're like, so. look at my sex tape! <laughs> In the hopes that they get famous. Well, like we'll Kim Kardashian. We'll see but I'm sure that's, that's out there. People are getting involved, but... Yeah, not for a while yet. I'm not well, I mean, I don't. Yet. Well, I'm not either. But I, but I don't think it's far off. <laughs> but no, it's it's that kind of thing. Of like everybody kind of wants to show their lifestyle now, mm-hmm. and that seems to be the th- the thing that people are sharing now. It's the lifestyle. Look how look at the day that I've spent next yeah. to the pool. Look at the day I've spent with this shiny car. Maybe that though, I as well, and people stuff. want to glorify those moments, and obviously, so- social media allows that. Whereas back in the day, like you say, if you're grafting all day long, mm-hmm. and now you've got the position to show as like a social cue that look, I do have that life that I dreamt of. But yeah, I'm at work most of the time of the year. But in uh-huh. those little moments, I can prove to people that because I work so hard all year long. I got that four or five days at the beach. Right. And so like, I better make the most of that and show everybody that I'm living. That it was all life. worth it. It was all worth it. Yeah. I'm grinding in something I hate, but it was worth it because now I'm drinking uh-huh. a cocktail at the beach. Right. Whereas I, <laughs> I was kind of saying to uh, it, one of these conversations that I had twice yesterday, um, I was like, um, I actually am quite content with the amount of money I'm earning now. It's not a lot of money, right? Yeah. I'm quite content with it. I can go out. I can still do stuff. I can't like, go on a private jet over to Malibu. Um, <laughs> I don't know why Malibu, but... We are, take, we are taking donations. So. <laughs> um, but I can live comfortably. Yeah. And actually, I would much rather do what I do now, live off mm. my acting on the same wages that I'm earning now, yeah. than having that jet set lifestyle in a job that I hate, mm. earning shit ton of money but only having like Saturday and Sunday off well that's why that around the idea of like working back I'm going Friday night getting absolutely pissed Ooh. to wake up right off half a Saturday because you're hungover rant bombs are coming then to repeat Saturday night because it's Saturday night so everybody goes out and gets pissed to then right off Sunday because you got completely hungover twice and <laughs> two times hungover and then go in on Monday to repeat the same thing. I've been guilty of that in the past, which is like right. After. And you've you've experienced yeah, it, right? Yeah, so totally, totally. Explain. Go. What on the philosophy behind why? Well, no, might just do like that. just like what it why it how it felt like doing that because I think I think people are aware that it feels shit. I think the thing is, it's not about like. People know that it's not good for them, but I think... Because you pissed people... money up the wall, didn't you? I remember you telling me. <laughs> you literally pissed it up the wall. First, yeah, my first time working nine to five, I, every, every bloody month my money was just zapped. But I think it's more you're kind of... It's back to that idea that you're working so hard in something you hate. You're like hating your job, but it feels like you've put in all that work. It's the same reason why after people do a really tough day of work, they want to go get a pizza. It's like you mm-hmm. want to reward yourself for that hard work. And if you can't switch up your brain and think, fuck, what is this my life? So the next thing is, if I get pissed, I can forget about the need that I'm doing something I hate that I'm not passionate about. Mm-hmm. So I think a lot of time we might it, it can come across like we're kind of digging at people for that way of thinking. But if anything, I think it's a way that our bodies and our minds are trying to protect ourselves because mm-hmm. a lot of the time we are in that zone where you know you hate what you're doing. Yeah. You know that you're not passionate. You know that there's an opportunity out there. 
but you're so like stressed about it, so you feel there's no way out that the only way to kind of give yourself a bit of a time off from that is maybe going out getting pissed and trying mm-hmm. to just live that life or going on holiday on that weekend and getting totally battered and spending all your money because you just want to feel like and it's, it's the same reason people come home from holidays and they feel like oh that was such an amazing time I wish that could be the way I live and because uh-huh. they're desperate for it so I don't think a lot of time it's not the person's fault oh yeah absolutely I it's... think it's the, the lifestyle they've got themselves into and it's their way of really kind of switching off it's mm-hmm. their meditation sometimes I do yeah. think going out on a Friday night and being around friends and literally letting oh don't the, get me wrong like, the it's, week go. it's fun yeah, it's destructive it's, though. It, it's it's right. totally destructive. And it's also like how often are you doing it and why are you doing it, I think yeah. is, the, is the question that has to be asked as opposed to don't go out and get pissed on a Friday night. And I, I generally think not enough people tie this sort of like, um, it's sort of like self-destruction. And I think the body goes into that self-destruct mode when it doesn't like what it's doing. Mm-hmm. It kind of, it's like a, I don't know whether it's some sort of biology thing. It's kind of the same reason why someone goes off in like an animal that's ill or is dying goes off into a corner and tries to just distract because it has to just crawl away and it's it's had enough. And I think that's what happens with people. I don't know scientifically or psychologically wise, but I do think when you're hating what you do, you're in this self-destruct, fuck mm. the world mentality that you're going to get into these shitty habits of treating yourself badly, mm-hmm. of getting yourself pissed, of trying to escape life, of getting into fights, of all these negative things happen because you are negative, you are hating what you do. So how yeah. do you expect positiveness positive behavior to come out of yourself yeah and that ties back to the lifestyle exactly so so let's take a quick break yes thank our sponsor and we will be back in a moment we thought we'd just take a few seconds just to say thank you to our sponsor the university of northampton huge thank you to them for supporting the show um so why should you check them out well first of all we're alumni we went there so everything that we kind of deliver to you kind of comes from them in a way Um, But also, they're not just about getting a degree. The thing we love about Northampton Uni, from experience, is the fact that you come out of your course with your degree, but also there's so many options on the table. They understand that it's not just about going out and getting a job anymore. It's also about the possibility of setting up your own business and becoming an entrepreneur. And to top that off, (laughs) it's not just about setting up a business. It's about setting up a social enterprise. That's their specialist area. So if you're thinking of setting up a business, it can also be one that's doing good to the world and delivering social impact. So check them out, northampton.ac.uk. And a huge thank you to them for supporting the show. Welcome back. Hello. So we're got, talking got about... Got a bit deep towards we the did. end of that last bit, yeah. We did, but I think it was... An, and that's why I kind of wanted you to, to kind of explain yeah. the transition and like, in hindsight, what it was like. Plus, as well, I didn't mention like just being young. Like, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, to be fair, to <laughs> when be you're fair, young, like, it's a completely like, different you're story. You're not questioning those sort of ways, those behaviours. Normal, you can yeah. speak to any like yeah. twenty year old. Who's I almost wish I'd done more of that. <laughs> to be <laughs> to honest, a certain degree, yeah. Um, but anyway, but it's it's not it's again it's not about saying oh don't do that stuff because at the end of the day enjoy yourself. But yeah. it's more of a question of are you doing it because you want to have fun or are you doing it as an escape? Or are you totally oblivious to why you're doing it? So why not question the behaviour and ask yourself, like, mm-hmm. why are you doing these things when you... Because yeah. the thing is, you do wake up the next morning, you feel like shit. And at that moment is when you're contemplating your life, thinking, who the fuck am I? What have I done to myself? <laughs> why kind of just die? You get philosophical I mean, in your hangovers. You, you get proper... It's those philosophical hangovers <laughs> that mess you right up and you start moping around the house in your boxes and just being like, who am I? What am I? I hate myself. Go out of the wash. <laughs> And that's your that's the depth of your philosophical oh, conversation. Wait, yeah, basically. As opposed to why am I here? Yeah. yeah. How did I end up? Somebody like, get this? me a what coconut water. Life? <laughs> Somebody get me some water. So you go for coconut water, I go for isotonic drink. Yeah. Well either of those are pretty good for the old thing. Isotonic is great. Drink water before you go to bed, it sorts you right out. <laughs> yeah, yours used to be like, I'm gonna have a banana and a glass of water. I used to I remember at uni, I used to yeah. like it was like a ritual. And a- you'd be like, Have a banana I'm like, mate, I don't want a banana. <laughs> Keep it, but I'd have my little. I'll like, stick to my sausage. I'd actually put it in the fridge and like store a little area. Like, Gem, you must consume this when you get in. <laughs> and somehow, my bloody lizard brain, when I was just mashed, decided to go to the fridge. And I think I built up the habit yeah, of doing it. Yeah, definitely. Anyway, it's probably a placebo effect, but I don't think it did anything. Probably not. Placebo effect, that's yeah. what I reckon. Anyway. Hangover cure is over. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I guess we kind of need to discuss. How how one can lead with one's lifestyle. 
Um, I think, again, it just goes back to just being able to question what you want from life, mm-hmm. and that can change. Mm-hmm. Today is going to be different to tomorrow, but I do think people just need to take the time to question why they're working in the first place. Mm-hmm. It's that idea of, like, why are you earning the money? What's the, what are you... What have you? It's like, I heard the quote the other day, it's like, money is a story. Mm-hmm. And so it's kind of that idea that what is the story that you believe money brings you? Right. And I think once you know that, then and then you question it again, okay, there's a story... I want to have the house. Okay, why do you need the house? And you keep questioning it and mm-hmm. then eventually you'll get to the things you value, which right. is why you want those things. So maybe right. you want a house because you want a family and you pre- you want to have a relationship and whatever else. Once you get that, then you can figure out, then you can work back and say, well, actually, I'm earning money so I, get a, uh, so I can get a nice car or whatever, but I want that because I want to find a good partner. Well, actually, mm-hmm. you probably need more time to go out and socialise to get a good partner. You don't Rather than money. a car. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So it's the story that you're telling yourself that you have to question, which probably right. takes those sort of times of sitting down, meditating, or whether it's just being quiet or it is in those moments of mm-hmm. hangover philosoph- <laughs> philosophical thinking, <laughs> philosophical thinking. Yeah. But it's those moments where you can just sit and say, okay, why? Why am I doing this? Yeah. And I think that's when you can start leading a lifestyle because I think there's a lot of change you can make, but you can't make the changes until you become aware of why you want to make what right. you're trying to achieve and then you can kind of work backwards from that really. Right, because the question isn't about what you want to do for a living. No. That's a very different question. Yeah. This is about like why, what is it that's going to make you feel fulfilled? Yeah. Um, whether that is being able to work from anywhere in the world so that you can, because you want to experience the world. Mm-hmm. And if, if, you know, it's that thing of like when I get to the age of 85 and coming to the end of my life and I'm going, oh, I wish I'd seen more of the world. Mm. Like, what can you do to prevent that from happening? Regret minimization. Right, exactly. And so it's about like whenever anybody comes to me and says, oh, I don't really know what I'm doing with my life. I'm like, well, what do you want? Like, what is your dream? If you could have anything, anything you at all, what do you want? Mm-hmm. And then it's about reverse engineering from there what you want. Mm, and sometimes people... Like if you had like, if you had all the money in the world, if as Alan Watts says, money if money was no... If money was no object. If you could dream any dream, what would it be? What would it be? Yeah. And I think that is the one of the most sensible questions anyone can ask themselves. Yeah. Because like, I know that I'm in the right business as an actor because... If ever I've sat on the tube looking at the Euro Millions jackpot and going, what if, what if I had that? And I, I'm like going, okay, what would I spend it on? Like, I'd make film projects. I would yeah. invest in film projects so that I could be in them. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's what I would do. Yeah. I mean, I'd sort out all the other stuff as well, you know, sort out families' houses and stuff like that. <laughs> but like, when you're talking like millions and millions and millions, yeah. like more money than you know what to do with, I'd be like, okay, what would I do with the rest of it? Well, I'd invest some of it and then I'd set up a film, film studio yeah. and but star in all my films. Being with that, like you're already, for your own production company, you're already doing that without having the money and it's at a smaller right. scale, but you know it's the like the North Star of where you want to head. So right. it's not like you've, re- you've neglected doing it today over... Right. Saying okay, until I have the money, which I think well, that's most it. people get. Well, that's it. Right. I've I've gone instead of going. Well, I don't have the money, so I can't do it. Instead, I've gone. Well, okay, well, how can I start doing that now? Even if it's a smaller, minimized right. version of it, and I think that gives people a lot of passion, a lot of energy, especially when you know if you come home and you're writing that book after work, or you're mm-hmm. kind of working on your paintings or whatever else you're doing. I think even just doing it to a little degree, you know these people that you speak to, and I love doing it all the time when you meet. A businessy person like I went out I went and did a filming job last week and I was talking mm-hmm. to a um a guy he was actually like a PhD in like electric and energy and stuff like right. that and then I after you get into the hobbies and he was into volleyball and then suddenly you just you've opened this other aspect of them but they were so passionate about the volleyball which I'm, I'm assuming only makes him better at his job in what he does do because right. he's taking that time to add something he loves into his right. lifestyle yeah exactly. and I could tell he was excited about it and I could tell it gave him energy mm-hmm. and he loved what he did so mm-hmm. I think, yeah, you just see a different side of people when they are pulling in aspects of, like, sports from their childhood right. or creativity that they love doing back in the past. And it doesn't have to be, like, full-time. You don't have to go all in and say, well, I'm going to become a volleyball, a volleyball, a professional volleyballer, mm-hmm. whatever they're called. Is volleyballer? Volley- volleyballer. I guess so. I guess so. So yeah, It's a footballer, so volleyballer. <laughs> Makes <Maybe>. sense. <laughs> I have guess. To check that one out. <laughs> But yeah, I just do think that people who are, even if they're bringing aspects, a smaller level of it, or they're working towards that bigger picture later, maybe doesn't want to become a professional volleyballer, mm-hmm. but 
he's still brought into his lifestyle. So right, and again, it's that that good question as well of like if. What do you do? What do you love doing during your spare time? Mm-hmm. When you when the time is your own, what do you find yourself doing and pursue that? And I think you do have to make sure that if that if you figure that out and you now know what you want to do, you have to really prioritize it. You prioritize paying your bills. So why don't you prioritize right. living the lifestyle of doing the things? Yeah, you want to which do? I guess is exactly what we're implying with the with the title of the episode. But yeah, like as you say, you prioritize paying the bills, which okay, I understand that that's important, paying the bills and everything, but why don't you prioritise living how you want to live first and just ensuring that the bills are covered? Mm -hmm. And then, okay, yeah, at first it's going to be hard because, you know, of course, if everybody worked that way, like, a lot of people would be broke. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Because it takes time and you can't just turn a switch on and be like, that's my lifestyle, yeah. Come at me, bro. <laughs> uh, you've got to, you've got to, you know, transition. And there is a, tra- I mean, I, I really had to transition over about three years. I think it took me to finally get the lifestyle that I have now, which is still not where I want it to be. But my God, it's miles further along the road than where it was. And mm-hmm. it's because I came to London and I prioritized my acting career. Yeah, it wasn't pay the bills. It was no. I'm an actor, so long as I can pay the bills, yeah. then I'm fine. And, you know, when I came to London, I prioritised it so much, actually, that I couldn't pay the bills. Uh-huh. Um, I was just getting by, but I've built and built and built, and now I'm earning more than I've ever earned. Mm-hmm. And some of that work is from my... Some of that money is from my acting work, others from the side job. But, again, I've built the lifestyle so that I can do both. And I think, as well, Dr. D. Martini talks about this a lot, and I think... He always says, like, pay yourself first, but I think also you can actually, like, treat yourself first because I do mm-hmm. think if your bills are your priority, then they are, like, the, the main thing in your life. Whereas I think, actually, sometimes psychologically, treating yourself first and then the money second, it will come. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you are the person that's earning, you're the earning entity. Yeah, So right. you need to feel good in yourself and uh-huh. have energy to, when you're out on the streets and meet new people to make mm-hmm. new business connections or to have the energy to work, to mm-hmm. look after yourself. And so I think sometimes you kind of have to say, actually, I'm more important than the bills, first of yeah. all. Yeah, it makes you more valuable. It makes you more yeah. of an asset to yeah. people. You val- and plus, you value yourself. Like, you should be your number one priority. Yeah, goals. definitely. They're like, it's the whole analogy of the airplane. Put your mask on first. I do think that's the priority first. And you've got to do things that make you happy. I mean, why just slog away hating on life and right. resenting the way you live and then be So that you can pay the landlord that you don't even like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like my landlord, for the record. <laughs> He's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. But, like, a lot of people don't. A lot of people hate their landlords. Yeah. And, like, you're busting your gut every month to give them more money. Like, yeah. screw that. Yeah, and it's just kind of, again, it goes back to money management is an aspect of it. A lot of people are mm-hmm. earning that money and spending it in stupid ways where they could, like, cut it down. We've done a whole episode on that, so mm-hmm. we'll obviously won't go into that too much. But, again, I mean, it's, it's kind of the same as the going out drinking because a lot of the time the people are spending the money on stuff that they don't need because they're unhappy with their lifestyle. Whereas actually, you'll find you're a lot less materialistic when you've got the lifestyle that you want because you go, do you know what? It's so true. Do you know what? I've got what I need. Yeah. I don't... I mean, don't get me wrong. It's still nice to have some nice fancy stuff every now and then, yeah. but you're not so drawn to the material stuff. Yeah, yeah. You're still like, oh, yeah, I really want that. Yeah. But like, you're not like, I'm just going to go and spend money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I do think once you've got your life on order, that whole need for materialism is so like, just not there. It goes back to that whole social media thing. It's kind of, you are just treating yourself for the cues of success, like these mm-hmm. fake trinkets of success. Right. But in fact, actually... The success is probably that people, the deeper success is that how people see you. If you're someone who turns up to life, who's mm-hmm. loving it with energy, doing the things you love, whether that is basketball, rowing, whatever it is, I think on a, on a deeper level, people know oh, that's a fancy watch, but on a deeper level, if you're doing the things you want more, I think that's the probably the best social cue available. Yeah. And you'll feel proud that you're doing it for yourself. Right. I'd rather be judged on the energy that I bring into the room than whether or not I'm wearing a Rolex. Boom. I think we'll end it there. Boom. <laughs> can we put that as an Instagram shareable? Maybe, I like that. Maybe. It's off the cuff. We can pop that one on. Oh, you see what I did there? Off the cuff. Off the Rolex. cuff. Wow. He's, he's just woke uh, up. Caffeine. On fire. Caffeine, Caffeine just hit the bloodstream. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, on that note, we'll leave it there. I think so. <laughs> um, so, thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, 
please hit that subscribe button and the thumbs up. Give that thumbs up some love. Um, and if you are on iTunes and you haven't subscribed, then what are you doing? Hit that subscribe button and leave a review. Five stars or more would be greatly appreciated. Show notes for this episode are at powerfulnonsense.com forward slash one, two, six. Thanks very much, guys. And we'll catch you next time. 